and welcome back to my channel for the beginning of a new vlog. I really just wanted to take you along on a bit of a work week for me this week. It's actually a shorter week, it's a shorter working week. I'm only working for four days because I'm off on holiday on Friday which is <laughs> so needed. <laughs> I'm off to the Highlands with um, some friends and my partner and it's going to be wonderful and relaxing and chill and I'm going to read and I'm going to wander uh, the beaches and the countryside and I'm going to eat food and play games and I cannot wait. Let me tell you, have the past six or seven weeks been uh, awful? Yes. <laughs> I have been both physically and mentally very ill <laughs> over the past six or seven weeks. Um, I have had a bunch of different illnesses and infections and that has had like obviously a um, compounding effect on what I was already dealing with in terms of burnout and stress. So yeah, I'm very excited to get away, um, but I'm feeling a little bit better this week in general. So I thought, you know, whilst I really like get my like order and structure back in my life and um, get back to um, the current projects I'm working on, I thought it might be nice to, you know, fil film this vlog. This year, as I'm sure you have noticed, has been a bit of an adjustment for me. I submitted my PhD at the end of last year. I completed my Viva um, and submitted my final, final finished thesis in January. And ever since then, I've been kind of coming to terms with the fact obviously I'm not a student anymore, I'm not researching anymore, um, I am in a sense like a full-time writer now with some other freelance work, yes, um, I don't solely write. But even with my other freelance work, being an author has kind of become like my every day <laughs> um, and it's very strange to say that because I wanted to be an author ever since I was about seven years old so um, it's wonderful but it's also very stressful adjusting I think to a very new system and finding order in your life and also just like the pressure of obviously constantly trying to get work as a freelance person or an author who you know needs 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 the, the work to pay the bills but um, quite a few things are going on right now that I'm very excited about so I thought you know I'd take you along on this week specifically. Um, first of all, next week in particular, I have some books coming out. So I actually have these two little books coming out next week. These are my two volumes in the Macmillan Collector's Library series um, by Pan Macmillan, which I edited as well as wrote complementary material to go alongside. But the stories themselves are taken from a selection of Victorian a little bit Georgian, a little bit Edwardian uh, literature and collections in Greek myth retelling. So basically in these volumes I brought together um, the the stories from that era that I feel like are in keeping with the Greek myths themselves and the ancient versions we have whilst also like bringing them to life in a very readable way. So in that sense I wanted these books to be the kind of thing you could pick up as a little intro to Greek mythology whether it be the gods and goddesses volume or the heroes and heroines volume. But I also wanted to um, talk about the fact um, that they were so popular particularly in the Victorian era and that the whole like popularity or Greek mythology trend that we're seeing now in literature and have been for a few years now is is not really new. Um, it's been around for a very long time, you could even say it dates back to antiquity. These stories have been retold time and time again so that was also something I wanted to highlight with these little books. So I am so excited for these to be out there in the world. They come out in just over a week and because I'm going to be on holiday that week I want to like make some TikToks and some like Instagram video content and picture content to go online next week to talk about these so that um, people hear about them and that I'm able to um, share them with everyone on release week and in the like final days of, of pre-orders but that means I have to do that this week so that it's um, ready to go for next week so um, that's one of the things I want to do this week. I also as you might have seen recently signed with a literary agent which is very very exciting and with my wonderful new agent Emily I have had my first offer on a fiction novel which is 
out of this world and I'm super super excited about this novel um, which I'm working on at the moment and uh, that is one of the things I will be working on this week alongside some more edited volumes that I'm working on at the moment so that is kind of like what I have on the cards for this week. We've got, you know, um, crack on with the novel, we've got do some more research for the edited volumes I'm working on and I'd like to create some social media posts for um, next week's releases. So that is, yeah, my like week as an author this week and um, hopefully we like make a dent in all of those tasks and I'll take you along with them. But I'm also wanting to take it a little bit easy like I said I've been quite ill um, um I've, I've been quite burnt out as well and, and I only really feel like now I'm starting to find some balance again but I think you can you you can run <laughs> before you can walk right and I don't or you don't want to run before you can walk so I want to take it easy I want to be kind to myself I want to enjoy working on what I have to work on at the moment and then obviously I just have like my weekly emails and correspondence I need to keep up with so that's the plan but before we do any of that it's actually going on lunchtime so I'm gonna make myself some lunch and a nice coffee and go and sit outside because it's really sunny today so I think it'd be good to get um, a little bit of vitamin D and a little bit of fresh air um, in, in, in regard to that like being kind to myself so yeah that is what I'm gonna do first and then we'll get cracking. <laughs> Surprise, surprise, I'm feeling not great again. <laughs> I ended up mainly focusing on research today. I didn't write anything, um, but I did actually, you know, get um, some information I was seeking, shall we say. <laughs> I, did, I never know how much, like, is... Um, sort of industry standard to kind of share mid project or like before publication or even before like um, publisher announcements so yeah I did some research for both the projects I'm working on um, and I'd say I made a little bit of progress on both um, I also spent a lot of time and this is so reminiscent of PhD and academia looking for books and um, spending like potentially an hour just trying to find something online in an accessible place that like I can access um, or perhaps a book that's out of print trying to track down like a copy I can buy second hand um, so there was a chunk of time that was spent on that um, which you know it's just it doesn't seem to matter whether you're an academic or you're writing uh, fiction <laughs> it's like just still the way so I did spend um, a bit of time doing that and a bit of time um, just um, researching and um, doing a bit of reading so that was that was good that was all really helpful um, making you know progress in a little bit more of a systematic way than I have been um, but I'm still like finding myself having real bouts of lethargy which has been the case since um, 
I was in Malta. Um, Chris and I, I don't think I mes mentioned, but you might have seen on social media, went to Malta six or seven weeks ago, which is where I got really ill. Um, so yeah, just like since then, that l illness like led to some infections, which like then obviously impacted just kind of my overall physical health. So it's been it's been a recovery period. Um, and I am definitely still not 100% as I can tell from today even, um, but it does feel like a better day even if I felt not 100% and now I think I'm just going to spend the rest of the evening reading for myself, um, something so completely far removed from anything I'm doing or working on and that is As Good As Dead by Holly Jackson. This is the third book in Holly Jackson's um, Good Girl's Guide to Murder series which is a YA thriller trilogy and the other two books in the series I read in such a quick space of time. I think I read book two in 24 hours and book one in like two or three days. They're really like captivating reads and I feel like that's what I want. I want just like something to get fully immersed in, to get really absorbed in, to wonder what's going to happen and I know from experience that Holly Jackson does really good like red herrings and like plot twists so I think this will be a really nice um, way to relax this evening. It's a little bit thicker than the previous two but I'd like to you know read it before I go away because I'd rather pack things I'm not like halfway through if that makes sense for space. Um, so yeah, um, <laughs> I am going to start reading this tonight, um, have some ice cream, um, do a couple of chores like washes and things like that because you know, adulting um, and that's it. No more work, um, some, some chores um, but mainly relaxing and reading so I'll probably check back in with you tomorrow and see how that goes. I'd like to do some actual physical writing tomorrow so um, we'll start at zero words for the week. Um, we're still on zero um, but hopefully by the end of the day tomorrow we'll be on a little bit more than that. But yeah, I'm gonna go flop, um, do some reading and I'll see you tomorrow. Happy Tuesday everybody. I did not get to sleep last night. I woke up early enough yesterday. I think I woke up about 7am um, but I could not get to sleep. I don't think I was asleep until like 2am so today I think I was up about 8 um, which means I got around 6 hours which isn't like the end of the world but it didn't feel like a very restful sleep um, especially because like I just couldn't get to sleep. Like I hate I hate that feeling when you can't just get to sleep. And I don't mean like, you know, like half an hour, 45 minutes, that's one thing, but when you try and go to sleep and like are so wide awake for like at least a couple of hours, oh, hate it, hate it, hate it, but hey ho, there we go. Uh, this is life and we carry on and we try our best. So <laughs> that's what I'm doing today. There's, there's no, no makeup day, I don't have the energy for that. <laughs> um, but I did um, get a little bit of writing done this morning. I actually started off by doing a little bit of research, which I did on my laptop in my bed because like I said, not a great night's sleep. So we had coffee in bed and did a little bit of research on the laptop um, for some things that I'm looking for, for the edited volumes I'm working on, which I think went all right actually. That was that was useful, well time well spent. But now we have moved on to some writing, some fiction writing. I mentioned yesterday that I don't know what I'm allowed to say about it but like based on my agent's tweets I'm pretty sure I can tell you that it is inspired by British Celtic legend and it is sapphic which I just love. I've written 145 words this morning. Woo woo woo. I know it's like oh my gosh the speed at which this woman writes. In my defense I only started writing about half an hour ago and um, I've had uh, a week off so I'm just getting back into things um, in terms of like this book specifically. But before I get back to it I thought I'd just show you some book posts I got because I think this is going to be very exciting. So the first one I've already fully opened um, and it's simply my uh, pre-order of the new Hellebor issue. Uh, so Hellebor is a uh, magazine or journal that focuses on British folk horror and um, like history of the occult and the esoteric and religion and folk tradition and horror and literature and cinema and film 
in Britain, uh, with like some uh, articles that do touch on uh, the wider world, but like with a focus on Britain. And this is the new issue, which is for Beltane uh, 2023, issue number nine, and it is the old ways issue. So I'm very excited about this. I love, love, love this magazine, and I'll probably take this on holiday with me to read. Um, we then have a book which I didn't fully open. I know it is, but um, I thought it would be fun to fully open here because these just came in the post earlier this morning. And, and it is double wrapped. <laughs> okay, not as quick a reveal as I was expecting. Come on, come on. This should be a non-fiction book. Um, yes, it is indeed. So this is a copy of Messalina um, by Honor Cargill Martin, a story of empire, slander, and adultery. This is basically a non-fiction book all about the Roman Empress Messalina, um, which has been getting a lot of praise and a lot of like preemptive hype around it, as well as good um, early reviews. So the author offered to send me a copy, and of course I was like, yes, I am here for this. I think one of the best things to come of the past few months, despite um, everything else, is that I have gotten so much more back into reading non-fiction. I think by the end of my PhD, I wasn't reading non-fiction. Like, I just wasn't, not realistically, maybe an essay here or there. Um, but if it didn't have something specifically to do with my PhD thesis and it was non-fiction, I wasn't reading it. It didn't matter if it was like ancient non-fiction, modern day political non-fiction, Victorian history non-fiction. I, I was not reading it. Um, but over the past few months, I have been fully getting back into reading my non-fiction. I actually think like picking up magazines like Hellebore have helped because they're like a little bit shorter, they're like small tidbits so that's been like an easing back in and then more recently I've been reading some like full length history uh, uh, novels? No Jean, history non-fiction books like but like full length chunky books so yeah very very excited and um, just generally speaking loving, loving my non-fiction at the moment. I have bought quite a few books and been making my way through them so yeah that's been great but I better get back to work. It's coming on for lunchtime again. Um, so I'll maybe do a little bit more writing and then make myself some food and then take some photographs of um, my little Macmillan Collector's Library books like I mentioned I would do for Instagram. I did film a TikTok about them for next week, which I did, act I did actually manage to film um, a TikTok and Instagram reel about them, which um, I'll use next week, but I also want to take some pictures. So yeah, let's get to it, shall we? So from this point on, if not when I was filming that clip, I just did not want to be on camera this day, which is one of the issues with vlogging. You can start with the best intentions, but you don't know how you're gonna feel during the week. So basically, here's some clips of what I did with my evening, including editing and watching Mrs. Maisel. So next day, I think. <laughs> has absolutely nothing to do with work or writing. Since I mentioned at the beginning of this video or in the first day of this video that I was reading As Good As Dead by Holly Black or was starting it, I just had to like update you, sorry. <laughs> it's a very bright light. Um, I've just passed halfway and like, this book has taken some directions I'd not expected to. Um, <laughs> and I'm just like in a state of, what? So, obviously I don't want to spoil anything for anybody, um, detail-wise, but I'm in a right state of what, where is this book going? Um, and thankfully the audiobook is on Scribd, so I can also listen to it when I'm doing other things, which helps me get through it faster and, like, find out what's going to happen. Um, that's like my strategy with a lot of books these days. I find that I'm more likely to get through a book more quickly and like commit to it more fully if I have the audiobook and the physical book because it means I can read when I want to physically read, like in bed or in the evening, curled up on the sofa or on public transport. Um, and I can listen to it when I 
want to listen like when i'm doing chores or walking somewhere um etc etc and the thing is you can't like who can afford to buy every single book in audiobook and physical book form so this is why i get very excited when script has an audiobook because it means that like I don't have to pay anything extra if you don't know Script is like a Netflix style subscription service for audiobooks where you pay monthly but you get access to like all of their audiobooks and that's a lot of audiobooks not just one um so yeah I'm I'm flitting between the two but I'm still only halfway through um which yeah is it's taking longer than the other two because it's longer and it's also like intense <laughs> basically I think what I'm trying to say is like if you've read this book um we need to talk like I need I need to talk to someone about it yeah <laughs> um but that's that's my reading update hi so my camera battery is currently charging so I have plugged my microphone into my computer and I'm recording on photo booth which is a combination I've not really done before like obviously the video quality of photo booth is not quite as strong but usually the audio is also awful so hopefully this at least improves the audio um I am also a bit nasally because of hay fever that time of year man it's that time of year um and i just wanted to update you since this is my final work day um i'm i'm getting on okay i've written a couple thousand words um but i do feel like i've been a little bit distracted i said i would be easy on myself and kind to myself so i have managed to get some writing done um but i haven't felt necessarily as focused as i would like to i am writing reading I can't even speak I am going to do some more writing this afternoon um with my friend Tasman we're going to go on uh zoom or facetime or something and write together and keep each other company and do some like sort of like writing sprints together which I think is really helpful and really motivational to just like get the words on the page and not worry too much and then you can obviously go back and make them better words which will hopefully like leave me in like a more comfortable place to go on holiday feeling like yeah I've got some stuff done um, I'm not super behind um, and enjoy myself and relax and then come back refreshed. On that topic I thought I would show you the books that I'm thinking of taking with me because um, today I also need to get packed. We're leaving first thing really early in the morning so I need to pack everything tonight, make sure everything's ready and one of the things I obviously need to pack is books and we all love books here so let's look at the things that are like currently on my shortlist. I don't know if I'll have to axe a couple like this is not a reasonable amount for me to read in a week. Like I would never read this in a week even if I was just sitting and reading by myself for a week and doing nothing else. But I want to do other things while I'm away. However, I want to have options. Because I don't know what mood I'm going to be in exactly. So I've got a few options here. The first one is The Bridge Kingdom by um, Danielle L. Dan Danielle L. That is not the easiest thing to say. Danielle L. Jensen, <laughs> which is a fantasy romance book that I've seen a lot, a lot of really strong praise for. I actually think it was originally self-published and then got picked up um, by a traditional publisher, which is very, very cool. It's published by Penguin. And in particular, I've seen a lot of people talk about it on uh, Book Talk, like really highly rave about it. And these are from the Oxford Very Short Introduction series, which are as the title describes, a very short introduction to different niche topics. I recently read one of these I was kind of disappointed in. They're obviously um, all written by different authors. So some hit the mark and some don't for me. Generally speaking, I think it's a phenomenal series. I think you learn something from every book in the series. Um, but like the last one I read, which was on Anglo-Saxons, really missed the mark on the word introduction. It, it did not feel like an introduction. Um, it was missing a lot of context, clarification, def def defining of terms, um, background information, which I, I really, really missed. And that's coming from somebody who's a historian who has read a lot of really dense um, pieces of literature. But I think like if you're going to build something as an introduction then it should be an introduction even if it can't introduce everything there is still like a like a level right of like when something can still be considered an introduction and for me that book was not an introduction plus it was actually one of the shortest books in the series so there was definitely space to add that information that i would have looked for in an introduction i'm hoping for better things from these we have the celts 
and paganism. Then of course I had to pack some Juliet Marillier. This is a dance with fate. It's actually book two in the Warriors Bard series and I've been meaning to read this for ages. In fact I actually started it when it first came out but I just wasn't in the mood so I put it down and I've been meaning to read it ever since and I really feel like this could be the right environment to read it. You know I'm just I'm feeling the vibes. Um, I feel like this is going to be immersive and relaxing and wonderful as Juliet Marillier's books always are so yeah this is on there. We then also have a historical fantasy novel set in the 1800s whereas this is set in medieval Ireland. <laughs> this is set in the 1800s in London I believe and I've just started this and it really grabbed me from page one so I want to like keep keep going. I'm only a chapter in but I feel like I'm gonna really really enjoy this. Um, it's about a woman who traveled for one night to or traveled for a week to a magical garden uh when she was a child and now she's an adult and no one believes her and she's trying to like navigate all the nonsense of um like Lon the london ton anyway with this kind of like piece of her um that she wishes other un other people understood and she wishes she could rediscover but what if i crave some horror you ask <laughs> for that reason i have what moves the dead by t king fisher which is actually a really short one as well which is nice to have and i love t king fisher's horror i love their fairy tale retellings too but i also love their horror and this specifically is sporer which is a subgenre i didn't know there was a term for it until recently but i have actually read a few books within the subgenre of and it is horror that deals with spores aka mushrooms it's mushroom horror um literally no idea what this is about but i love t kingfisher and i actually surprisingly really enjoy sporer so i'm here for it definitely have to take this this is my childhood collection of celtic fairy tales collected by joseph jacobs i've had this since i was a child like it's it's pretty beat up and i just kind of like want to enjoy some of the like Celtic fairy tales and Scottish fairy tales that I grew up with whilst I'm on holiday in the Highlands. I am being such a tourist and I'm here for it and I'm going to enjoy myself so yeah I thought I would take this with me. But it's almost time for my call with Tasman so I'm going to go make myself some iced coffee since it's really hot and get writing. <music> vlogging obviously um after Tasman and I's writing session we wrote together for a couple of hours and also just like helped each other work through some like issues Tasman gave me some really good ideas about um the way I was writing a certain type of magic which was helpful um and they told me about their new project and what they were thinking for that so it is nice to have a writing buddy <laughs> it is really nice to just sometimes talk through what you're doing no matter how well you've planned it in advance with somebody else and have that company so yeah that was really good we got a few hours together and i wrote um a little bit more um of my current work in progress <laughs> and then i basically spent the rest of the evening packing until um chris and jill both came home and we, you know, got hyped for the holiday and did lots of prep. So it's now almost bedtime and I've only just remembered that I need to wrap up this vlog um, because we're going away. So yeah, thank you for following along in a little short work week, short week of work with me. I certainly don't know how to <laughs> string a sentence together. <laughs> Chris is looking at me. <laughs> Stop, you're giving me, um, you're making me shy. <laughs> Um, yeah, so um, everything's packed now. Got my camera, got my clothes bag and everything here. Um, and we're gonna go chuck it on the car because we're leaving very early in the morning. So we wanna be ready. Um, and I'm really, really excited. Uh, yeah, and maybe I'll get some footage and make some TikToks or some little videos or what have you. Um, I'm, I'm really excited. I feel like it's gonna be really, really good for me and everybody coming, I think. <laughs> We all need this and we're all going to have a wonderful time <laughs> um, and we will see you on the other side. I say we because like Leanne is coming too so I'm sure you watch Leanne's videos as well. Um, but until then I, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was interesting. Um, if I do do future writing work with me vlogs in the future let me know what you'd like to see from them and I will see you all soon. Bye!